So a couple of very interesting things about this particular orthographic is that I'm noticing that the dimensions are in millimeters. Okay, so we're not going to be able to use our regular architecture scale, so I'm going to set that off to the side and I'm going to grab out my regular ruler. You're going to need one that has centimeters on it and there are 10 millimeters for every centimeter. So this is the measurement that we're going to want. Okay, so it's saying that this is going to be 100 centimeters wide. So I'm looking down here and I'm just kind of thinking, yeah, if I put it close to the bottom, with the tip right about there, and it's just guesstimating at this point. I should be able to draw my glass box and keep everything inside without going and touching the border lines or increasing it so that it is touching my existing orthographic. So I'm starting off my um, drawing. First, I lined up my my parallel bar with the bottom line of the borders because this one looks like it photocopied a little bit crooked. So if I line up my my T-square with the bottom edge of my border line here and tape it down that way, I'm able to keep this at a consistent 30 degree angle. Okay, then I created a 30 degree projection off in the left and the right, and I'm gonna do a vertical line straight up. I'm using my 5H pencil. Okay, and as always, if this is the front view, then this is going to be the front view. If this is the right view, that's the right view, and the top view will be on top. So, now I need to come in and do some measurements. The width is 10, um, well, 100 millimeters long, so that's 10 centimeters. Okay, remember, each of these centimeters is 10 millimeters, so there's no need to sit and count 100 millimeters. Um, make life a little bit easy on you. Okay, so I made my mark and I'm going to project that straight up. Okay, my depth from front of the object to the back is a total of 30, so that's three centimeters. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to project that up. And then my total height is 60. I'm gonna double check this. One of these looks crooked to me. Yeah, something looks a little bit off. Just go ahead and take a moment to double check it. No, my line's straight. Oh well. And then I'm going to do six centimeters, which equals 60 millimeters. Okay, and project that off into either direction. So hopefully at this point in your series of tutorials, you're starting to see a trend on how everything starts with a glass box, um, how you enclose it. And so once you start seeing a pattern, the shapes kind of start showing up a little bit easier. Now, here's something interesting. This is a 30 millimeters wide, and it's broken into 10 millimeter increments. So the bottom has this back piece from the very back of the object forward is gonna be 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna measure that out. I'm gonna project that straight up because that leaves 10, 10 millimeters on the left part, so that d automatically divides that. And if I'm going to be starting with construction weight lines, these lines should be nice and light so you don't have to erase them later on, um, and they won't distract from the final object once you darken in your object lines. Okay, so I've projected those up, and I'm going to double check my measurements. Yeah, they stayed consistent. Um, and then also down here at the bottom, this ridge goes all the way to the back of the object. So I'm gonna project that to the left. Okay, and here is the common mistake. 
people do not stop when it hits the back of the glass box because you don't automatically tend to draw the back bottom inside corner of the glass box. So where that corner intersects, you're gonna draw the inside line, okay? So you can see where to stop this particular line. That will come into play in just a few minutes. So the next thing I'm looking at is that this is 60 millimeters tall and they divide it into 20 millimeter chunks. So they divided it into three in 20 millimeter increments or two centimeter, if that's the way your brain is gonna be working today, which is fine. So every two centimeters, I'm gonna make a dot. This one I'm gonna project back And this one, I'm gonna project over to the left. Okay, so what is it? Oh, I need to project it to the right also. So I've kind of divided this into a grid so right now, things can get really confusing really fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and darken in my object lines to make this shape on the right side view. Okay, keeping in mind that we need to use a nice dark H pencil and start and stop right at those intersections. Oops, I wiggled. I'll come back with my eraser shield and clean that up in just a moment. Okay, so hopefully that offers just a little bit more clarity as to what it is that you are doing. Yeah, you guys see that tiny little bubble out that I did? There we go, that's a lot better. Okay, so now looking at the top view, I'm seeing one, two, three rectangles. Two of the rectangles are touching the top of the object. Those are the outermost two. So I'm going to project those back Okay. And what I'm doing, I'm going ahead and using my H pencil at this point because those are where the object lines belong. And when I darken in this side of the top, I'm going to leave a gap. Okay, the reason for that is this last rectangle is actually down here on that level. So I'm going to create an object line that comes back at a 30 degree angle and I stop when I hit solid object. Okay, we don't have hidden lines on isometrics. So the back of this, we are going to just drop this vertically down until I hit an object line. Okay. Finally, we're gonna finish up the front view, which is a giant rectangle and a small rectangle. Okay, and I've already got these measured out as to where they go because when I measured my height information initially, I transferred it over. So there's my big rectangle. My small rectangle. Okay, again, stopping it there. And it looks wrong because I need one more vertical line. Okay, 
I need to come through with my eraser shield and clean up some dots and intersections, make sure my name's on it, and then turn it in.